Hi, and thanks for watching. If you're new here, I'm Wendy. My husband and I buy things at garage sales, thrift stores, and flea markets to sell online and flip for a profit. If that's content you're interested in, stick around and make sure to hit that like button. It really helps us out as we're trying to grow our channel. Hi, and welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be what sold for the week of January 15th through 21st, and let's just dive right in. All right, the first item that we sold was a woman's torrid size four emerald green sweater. It had a pretty lattice detail on the front. We had gotten this at the Goodwill bins. We paid 61 cents for it, and it sold for $26.38 on offer to buyer. We always pick up torrid items. They just historically sell very quickly for us. Next up was one of my items. Um, it was an Island Shores women's size extra small linen wide leg pants. We got, uh, we sold that for $27.98 on offer to buyer. And I usually just say the cost on anything that belonged to me was zero because we got our use out of it. Next up was um, a vintage Playboy that we had gotten from the big lot of Playboys on Nextdoor. Uh, the cost for us was $1.43 and the it sold for $7.58 on offer to buyer. Next up was a 2017 McDonald's Happy Meal toy. It was not in the package, but it looked brand new. It was a Smurfs Lost Village yellow house and it had like all the little bits and pieces that came along with it. We had gotten it at a thrift store in a big bag of toys and we paid 19 cents for it and it sold for $8.99, which was asking price. And we also sold another Happy Meal toy. We sold a lot of Happy Meal toys this month for some reason. Um, so next up was a 2016 Happy Meal toy, which was uh, Plastic Man from Justice League. It was also loose. And this was just a toy that belonged to one of my kids. It was, um, so the cost was zero and it sold for $7.99, which was full asking price. Next up was another kids meal toy. It was a 2019 Chick-fil-A table topics. It was brand new in package and we had gotten a big bag of Chick-fil-A toys at the thrift store. They were all new in package. So our cost on that was 61 cents and it sold for $8.99, which was full asking price. Next up was from a big um, box of vintage records that we had gotten at an estate sale, and it was a Roy Clark record. So we had uh, paid $20 for the box and averaged out the cost of each record being 30 cents. And so this one sold for $10 and it uh, on best offer, and it actually went to, I believe, South Korea through the Global Shipping Program. Next up was another one. It was the Dusty Springfield record and it also cost 30 cents and it sold for $8.18. But the buyer immediately canceled this order. And I always just accept a cancellation unless we've already like sent the item out and the mailman has picked it up or if we've um, taken it to the mailbox, uh, the post office already. So, um, when this cancellation request came through, I clicked, sure, I'll cancel it, or so I thought I did. So then when I looked at my phone to see, it was pretty late at night and I was pretty tired. When I looked at my phone to see the details, it said, you've declined to cancel this order. I was like, oh no, whoops, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. And so I went over to my computer to rectify the situation. Well, I, there was no changing it. I mean, I, I was trying to look through all the different options, you know, go in through all the different back doors that I knew, and I could not figure out how to uncancel this cancellation request or uncancel this refusal to cancel cancellation. I don't even know how to say that, but I couldn't figure out how to fix it. So finally I called eBay customer service and they got on the phone and I said, you know, I've made a mistake. I accidentally clicked that I refused to cancel when actually I intended to just 
say it was okay. And so she said, well, okay. And I said, can you just override it or do what you need to do on your end to let him know that it's okay to cancel? And at this point I had already messaged the buyer and said, oh, I'm so sorry. I clicked the wrong button. It's not a problem to cancel. I'm working on it on my end. I'm actually in touch with eBay customer service because I can't figure out how to fix it on my end. And he said, okay, please don't send it. And I said, don't worry, I'm not going to send it. So eBay customer service says, well, we have no way to override it. This is what's going to happen. The buyer has to open an item not received case on you. And then don't worry, you won't get a defect on your record because we've on your account because we've made a note of it. But that's the only way to handle it. And I'm like, at the, I, I mean, at this point, I'm incredulous. I'm like, what? You just can't like, there's no way for you to click a button on your end and fix this. I, I mean, I just, I, I made a mistake. I, I, I didn't mean to like, take me back in time. It was just an accident. And she's like, yeah, no, they can do that. And so then my, my wheels start turning and I'm thinking, if they can open a case against me, then they, they theoretically can leave negative feedback against me. So I ask and I say, well, if they can open a case against me, will they be able to leave negative feedback? And she said, well, yes, they can, but if they do, we'll, we'll remove it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what? A, I mean, this is just a mess. So I said, okay. I, and I'm like, are you sure you don't have any way to just undo my mistake? And she said, no, the, we can't. And I'm just thinking this is ridiculous. So this purchase was made, I believe on January 16th, maybe January 17th. Today is February 3rd. That item is still open and hanging out in my unpaid items list. He sent me another message saying, and I, anyway, I followed up with him saying, you know, I've reached out to eBay customer service. They're going to reach out to you and let you know what you need to do. Don't pay for the item. We're not going to send it. At that point, he got mad and sent me a message saying in all caps, don't send the item. And I, I responded to him again and I said calmly, I'm not going to send the item. Everything's fine. We've considered it canceled. I just clicked the wrong button and there's no way to undo the clicking of the wrong button. So at that point, he calmed down. He never opened a case against me. Nothing's happened. No negative feedback has been left. But I'm just kind of waiting out. I'm hoping that after 30 days that item, unpaid item will just disappear off my account. And if not, I guess I'm going to have to get on the phone with eBay again and ask them to intervene. But it just boggles my mind that there is not a way for them to undo that mistake. Has this ever happened to you? Do you know a way to make this go away? Do you know a way to reverse that if you accidentally click it? Any advice here? Please comment below because I am just going to be extremely careful in the future to not accidentally click the wrong button again because that has been such a hassle. It has just um, annoyed me <laughs> so badly. And word to the wise, don't click the wrong button because it is not an easy jam to get out of. So on to the next item. The next item that we sold was another McDonald's Happy Meal toy. I mean, we were just on a roll. I think the eBay algorithm was like, yeah, these people are, are McDonald's Happy Meal toy sellers. <laughs> uh, it was a Thai TV Beanie Boo new in the package. Uh, we had gotten that at a garage sale for 25 cents and it sold for $10 on best offer. Next up was an NCAA college football Road to the Rose Bowl Sega game, Sega Dreamcast game. We got that at a garage sale for, let's see, 72 cents, and it sold on best offer for $10. No, for $13.28, sorry. And that sold on offer to buyer. Next up was a really interesting item that we found in the Goodwill bins. 
It was a vintage 1950s, new in the box. It had all its parts and pieces and it worked when we tested it. It was a chic home brand electric massage vibrator. And we, so we paid $1.50 for it at the Goodwill bins. And I we comped it and everything. There were a few listed and they were selling pretty well. And so I listed it at $69.99. And we got a lot of low ball offers on that item. But I knew that it was going to sell pretty high. I knew that we were going to be able to get pretty close to our asking price. So uh, it did eventually sell for $55.98 on offer to buyer. So, I mean, we had it in our store for about three months and we eventually got a pretty good offer on that. So we were, we were, we were pleased with that one and it was just such a cool item to, to find. Next up was an Old Navy women's size extra large fit and flare new with tags dress. I'd gotten that for $4 at a garage sale and it sold on best offer, no, yes, on best offer for $20. And the lady at this garage sale had had a sign up, like posting all of her prices on everything. And she had a few new with tags items and she had the price listed on her sign for all of her new with tags items as half price of the tags, which was crazy because the tag prices on a lot of the stuff was really high. Like this dress particularly, I think the tag price on it was like $45. I don't know, $46, something like that. So she was thinking that she was going to charge me like $23 for the dress. And I was like, I don't think so. So what ended up happening is I just piled a bunch of stuff in a pile. And I said, how much do you want for this? And she pointed at the sign and she said, well, every, all the prices are here. And I think I just kind of gave her the, the silent negotiation treatment where I just kind of stared at her, <laughs> like the cringy silent treatment and stared at her for a minute, you know, where it was like, <laughs> and then I think she eventually just gave me like a normal price and I, I, said that I got it for four dollars <laughs> but that's that cringy silent treatment usually works for me so give it a shot all right next up was a vivo wall mount um, for a nintendo switch we found it in the goodwill bins in the box but it was missing the hardware like the screws to put it on the wall but you could use you could have used any screws any like any drywall screws or anything like that would have worked. Um, and it sold pretty quickly for $12 on best offer and we had paid 92 cents for it. And next up was a really pretty Christmas ornament that we found at a garage sale. The designer, the artist for it was, her name was Kitty Keller and it was a cloisonne ornament made with 24 karat gold and the design on it was the theme of the ornament was Fort Worth, Texas, which is, um, we live near Fort Worth. But I looked her up, this particular designer, and she, although I think she's local to Texas, I think she might live near Austin, she does designs, she does national designs, and she does all kinds of themes. And her ornaments had a great sell-through rate, and they sold high on eBay. And so I would definitely be on the lookout for her ornaments because they were selling, I mean, I don't remember what the sell through rate was, but I, I think it was pretty, pretty close to like almost a hundred percent. And they were, and we sold ours for thirty six forty eight, and they were all selling for pretty close to that price. We paid $4 for the item at a garage sale. It sold for thirty six forty eight on offer to buyer and that was after Christmas, and I would I would guess that you know right before Christmas you could probably fetch a little bit more for her ornaments. Next up was an Old Navy women's gray boat neck sweater that we had gotten from the Facebook Marketplace box of plus size clothes. Uh, we I do have a video of me unboxing that if you want to watch it. I will link it in the information down below, and I'll try to link it. Um, up here somewhere, but uh, that has not been working for me lately, so we'll give it a shot. If you have any suggestions about linking videos in YouTube, please
please comment below because I've been having some issues with it lately. Uh, we paid $4.17 for that and that sold on best offer for $14.20. Next up was a Brunswick Pro Bowling Nintendo Wii game. It was complete, it had the manual and everything and we tested it and it worked. We purchased that at a garage sale for $1 and it sold for $10 on best offer. Next up was another vintage Playboy from August 1980. This we paid $1.43 and it sold uh, for asking price for $13.49. And this was a repeat buyer. He had, um, both times he purchased something, he had asked us to send it in a box and send it via priority shipping. And normally when we send magazines, we send them in a cardboard magazine mailer and we send them media mail. So that was a special request. We did honor it because he offered to pay extra. And um, actually after the second time he asked us to do it, we decided that we would go into all of our listings because we offer free shipping on everything. It's just the cost of shipping is rolled into the price of our items. So we went into all of our listings and added the option to uh, upgrade your shipping to priority for an additional cost. And sometimes we, we will ship priority if that's the better option. But if a buyer specifically wants to know with 100% accuracy that they're getting priority shipping, they can select that option and pay extra for it. Or if they want like expedited shipping where they know they're gonna get it by a certain day, we offered that option for an even uh, more expensive, like Priority Express for a more expensive option as well. So we're hoping that that might, um, you know, fetch us a little bit extra money in certain circumstances. So that helped us make some positive changes to our store as well. Next up was a pair of 45 inch Kiwi uh, sports shoelaces that we found brand new in the package in the um, Goodwill bins. We paid 92 cents for those. They sold for $7.99. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't just keep these for like my shoe repair kit, but uh, we decided to sell them and they sold quickly. Next up was a vintage 1981 Ronnie McCraney cassette tape. It was new and sealed. We got this at an estate sale for 50 cents and it sold for $11.25 on best offer. Next up was a J. Crew women's size 14 rose print pencil skirt that we got at the Mom's Gonna Be Mad garage sale. Um, you can find out more information about that on our um, one of our last What Sold videos, which I'll link down below and maybe in, up above as well. We paid 50 cents for that and uh, we sold that for $23 on best offer. Next was a Disney Star Wars Pop Taters Yoda Mr. Potato Head replacement parts. We had gotten the entire Mr. Mr. Potato Head with the Yoda parts at a thrift store for $1.29. But when I was comping the Mr. Potato Head with the Yoda parts, something about him didn't look right. He, the potato part looked different on our potato than it looked on the other potatoes online. And then when I started looking at like the maker's mark information on the back of the potato compared to the Yoda parts, there were something was different. The date was different or something was different about it. I can't remember exactly what it was now, but I figured out that we had a different potato than what was the original potato for those Yoda parts. And the other thing I noticed that was odd is the top of the, the little Yoda head, head ear piece or head, head piece had like a tiny little hole drilled through it. Like they had given Yoda a lobotomy. <laughs> It was weird. I don't know what was up with that. We did, so anyway, what we decided doing to what we decided to do is to ditch the potato altogether. We donated it back to the to the thrift store. And then we sold the parts separately. We went with Commonwealth Flippers theory of if in doubt, part it out, which we do on board games and things like that. And so we parted it out and sold it individually. And we disclosed the part about the lobotomy and it sold quickly. 
for $14.18 on offer to buyer. But um, I don't know what was up with the lobotomy thing. I Like why they would have drilled a hole through it. But anyway, we do part out a lot of things like, um, like board games and, you know, other things that like broken electronics, maybe we'll keep the cord or something like that. Parting it out is, is a good way to recoup cost on things that maybe ended up being a bad buy for whatever reason. All right, next up was something that came from the big lot of free magazines that we got on Nextdoor. It was an Eat Clean Prevention Guide from 2018. Our cost was zero. Uh, it sold for $7.19, which was our full asking price, but they did use a coupon. Next up was a pair of super skinny jeans by the Children's Place. They were new with tags and we had gotten them at a garage sale. We paid 87 cents, which I think is a weird cost for a garage sale. So I think she must have given us like a bulk price and then I averaged everything out. All right, I'm gonna stop for a moment and ask you guys if you're enjoying this content to please subscribe. It will notify you of when we upload new content and really helps out our channel. All right, let's continue. Uh, next up was a brand of shoes I'd never heard of, but um, we had gone to the flea market and there was a vendor that had, I mean, it was like a literal mountain of shoes. Just, a, and they were not organized at all. I mean, we were having to dig through the shoes and find mates to go with them. And I mean, we dug through that mountain of shoes for what seemed like 30 minutes. And we ended up finding 20 pairs of shoes and we asked her how much and she said $60. So we ended up paying $3 a pair for all the shoes and this was one of them. And it was a Joseph Siebel brand. It was a, Euro it was a European brand. I don't remember where it said it was made, but it was made in like maybe Denmark or somewhere. I can't remember. Um, but they were 100% leather. They were lace up comfort shoes and they, they were very nice. They looked like they had never been worn or maybe worn once. And I knew that they seemed expensive. And then when I got them home and uh, comped them, that I was right. They, they were very expensive and they sold very fast. They sold for $59.99 which was our full asking price, and they we had only paid $3 for them. And we have lots of other good shoes from that mountain of shoes. So when we go back to the flea market, we're gonna be digging in that mountain again, for sure. Next up was back from our early days of sourcing when we didn't know what we were doing. And it was a women's size extra small, purple North Face puffer vest, and we paid, like, I just like laugh now when I see how much we paid for this. It sold for $62.18. We got it at a thrift store and we paid $39.73. So we still made, you know, $5 or something, but like, what were we thinking? I, I mean, and why did the thrift store, what was, what were the, what was the thrift store thinking? I mean, what was everybody thinking on that one? But anyway, we we had it for a really long time, probably because we had it priced a little too high because we were trying to overcompensate for how much we paid for it. But anyway, it finally sold. Next up was something that I had gotten in my birch box. And I usually keep everything from my birch box, but occasionally I'll sell something or I'll wait and lot a few things that I don't want up together. But this particular item I looked up because I knew I didn't want it. And I noticed that it had a really good sell through rate just by itself. So I did list it by itself and it sold within like a week. And it was a Dr. Botanicals strawberry and poppy seed cleansing bar soap. It sold for $12.99, which was full asking price. And I just considered the cost zero because I get plenty of benefit out of my birch box. Next up was and oh, if you don't know what Birchbox is, I'll try to put a link down below to, um, to Birchbox, but it's a monthly subscription box that, that I do for like health and beauty products. And um, I love it. Sometimes they send small samples or they send sometimes full size samples and they'll customize it to what you like. So I'll put a link to that down below. And this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I just love Birchbox. Next up is another McDonald's toy. Um, it's a 2021 Happy Meal toy from the Disney's 50th anniversary set, and it was 
the Jacques figurine from Cinderella. He was loose. He didn't have a stand or anything. We had gotten him and a big bag of toys from the thrift store and we paid 15 cents for him and he sold for $7.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was something that was my daughter's. It was a Rue 21 blush colored satin bomber jacket with a fur lined hoodie and it sold for $24.48. Next up was another item that belonged to us. It was a Hanes training bra and it sold for $8 even on best offer. Next up was a lot of 23 Peppa Pig figures. We had collected these um, from toy bags in thrift stores and then we had gotten a whole bunch at the flea market. And so our cost on those was $4 and they sold for $20 on best offer. Uh, we didn't have any like rare figures or anything like that, but they did sell very fast. Next up was the cutest shirt and I, looking back on it now, I wished I had priced it higher because I knew that it was such a cute shirt, but this particular brand does not have a very good resale value. So I know that, I, I guess I was just a little gun shy on pricing it because I knew that it didn't have a very good resale value, but I should have priced it higher because I knew that it had a really great print. And it was a Stars and Stripes men's, by Drill Clothing, men's, uh, like red check barbecue print shirt. And I just knew like, man, this is gonna be the perfect shirt for somebody for a backyard barbecue or for a picnic or for like 4th of July or something like that. It was just the perfect print and it was in like excellent condition. It looked like it had never been worn or maybe worn once. So we got that at the Goodwill bins. We paid 92 cents and it sold on offer to buyer for 11.98 but I think I probably could have gotten closer to like 16 or 18 for that. I really should have priced it higher. I just was unsure about it. I think I should have started higher on that one though. Next up was another item we got in the Goodwill bins. I didn't know what they were at the time I picked them up. I just usually pick up anything that's new in package, but it was a, and we still have more of these as well. They were, they're called locator dots and they're, stickers that you put on a computer keyboard for people who have low vision or are blind and they provide a braille. I don't know if they are braille or if they provide um, a braille type um, touch system for, uh, for people who have low vision. So those sold, we got those for 92 cents and those sold for $9 and 28 cents. And we still have more of those listed. And those, um, those were hard to comp because they were hard to find, but the ones that I could find seemed like they did um, all sell. So I, I bet we will sell the remaining ones that we have. Uh, next up has been a great item for us. And I knew it would be when I saw these at a garage sale. They were Arm & Hammer Spin Brush replacement brush heads because I believe that these toothbrushes are retired and they don't make them anymore. So anybody who has this toothbrush and needs the replacement heads would have to go to eBay to find them because I don't think they can find them in the store anymore. And I got a bunch of them, like 10 or 15 at a garage sale for, I think, I got them all for 50 cents a piece and we've sold a lot already. Um, these sold for $15.99 a pack. And at one point we sold like three or four to one person. So we, these have already been a great money maker for us. So if you ever see any of the Arm & Hammer toothbrush heads or an Arm & Hammer toothbrush itself, pick those up because they definitely sell well. Okay, next up is a pair of Nike Men size 15 uh, free three athletic shoes. Those sold, those we paid $8.12 for at a thrift store and those sold very, very quickly for $39.99. They were in excellent condition. Next up was a really cool uh, lot of eight 1950s postcards, uh, like note cards and postcards that we had gotten at an estate sale. They were handmade. 
um, they were from Mexico and we knew that they were from the 1950s because uh, I don't I think that there were some we had gotten a big bundle of like postcards and all wrapped up together and I think there were some that looked like this that had stamps on them that were postmarked from the 1950s. So I knew with 100% certainty that these postcards were from the 1950s, but these were new and unused. I, I think I have some listed that uh, some, like a bunch of postcards listed that uh, are, that have been posted, but these were the ones that were unposted. Uh, let's see, I've lost my place. These uh, we paid 40 cents for and we sold for $13.58. They were really neat looking. Next up was a great sale. It was a 26 by 26 matted pastel. Uh, it was an original piece of artwork and it was by the artist Helen Zarin and it sold for $344.48 and it came from uh, it was actually gifted to us from a customer that uh, we do business with through another business that we do. Uh, and we, we, that's how we acquired that. Uh, next up was a magazine that we got in the big lot of free magazines. It was Bon Appetit from March, 2014. It sold for $7.19. And that's just more money coming in for those free magazines telling you. Next up was a um, really big cookie jar. It was very large. It was like this big square cook, rectangular cookie jar by J. Wilfred from the brand Andrea by Sadek. It was yellow and blue. It was a big ceramic cookie jar. It was made in Portugal. It was very nice. And it, uh, we got that at a thrift store. We paid $4.32 for it, and it sold for $44.98. Next up is um, something that we got at a garage sale. We paid a dollar, and it was a brand new in package uh, Texas A&M note cards. They were nice. They were little polka dots. Those sold for $12.99 very quickly for full asking price. Next was something that we had gotten at the uh, Goodwill bins and they had so many of these and I listed them all separately. They were, they had like tons of like wood cutouts, just natural wood cutouts, ready to be painted kind of things. And I've listed them all separately for now because I want to see how they do separately. But if they don't sell well, we'll probably just end up lotting them all together and selling them as a lot or doing them in several lots because we have so many. But we finally did sell one by itself. So far we have not <laughs> had a lot of success. It may have been a total waste of my time to list them individually. But this one did sell and it was a, um, it was one of the cuter ones. It was a four inch retro camper shape and it we paid 61 cents for it and it sold for $7.99. Next up, I also got in the Goodwill bins, and it was, I only picked it up because it was brand new with tags. It was a Jason Maxwell Women's Extra Large Open Front Cardigan. It's not a brand I would ever pick up anywhere else, but it was brand new with tags in the Goodwill bin, so I grabbed it. We paid $1.68 for it. It sold for $21.48 on offer to buyer. Next up was something that belonged to my husband. It was a Dungeons and Dragons book, The Savage Caves. It uh, sold for $34.99, which was our full asking price. Um, we did have it in our store for a very long time though. And last I'll go over all of the collectible cards that sold. If you've never seen one of our videos before, my husband has a very large collection of comic and sports cards. And that's kind of how we got our, our eBay business started is we decided that we were gonna start selling those cards and so that's how we began our eBay store. We have hundreds of thousands of cards to sell and so those cards sell for us all the time. They're like our bread and butter item of our store and we sell them regularly. And so at the end of every one of our What Sold videos, I'll tell you how many cards sold and how much they sold for. 
We sold 21 cards for $64.59. And that wraps up our video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you can be notified when we upload new content. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining and I'll see you next time. Bye. Little Savings. Little Savings. Little Savings.